Hi there and welcome back to another edition of the Bullies Out podcast with me, your host, Jenny Radcliffe. Today I'd like to welcome to the show another Jen, Jen May. Uh, Welcome to the show, Jen. And you're going to be talking to us all about the parental view of bullying. So first of all, tell us a little bit more about who you are and what it is that you do. So my name's Jen as well. (laughs) Um, And I work in Philly as a families learning together coordinator so we provide literacy and numeracy support to families across Caffili and then with Bullies Out my both my daughters are actually ambassadors now Rosie's joined as a mini ambassador she's oh. four and yes. Molly's 10 and she's part of the um the older ambassador group for Bullies Out so, so I'm we, just they keep you busy <laughs> oh I can imagine I'm just like that I didn't know about Rosie so we're going to get on to those in a minute so I mean obviously you work with families and, and so on but how did you first get involved with Bullies Out yeah so Molly um experienced some bullying it wasn't it wasn't the greatest um we had, went through a rough time I'm a teacher by trade so I know kind of like the background of what schools do and how they go about it but it was quite tough and it was something that I think it was quite difficult for me as a parent to support because obviously Molly's my oldest so I've done it from a teaching side but not as a parent inside um And we found out, a friend actually told us about Bullies Out and I got in touch with Linda and we had a session down there and Molly really, really enjoyed it. And I think it was nice for her to connect with people outside of school and to talk about her experiences and get some advice. So yeah, so we joined up and then Linda asked us to join the Ambassadors Programme. So we did that and that's where it all started. That's amazing. So, I mean, yeah, first of all, is Molly UK now? she is yes right we do we'll... have some issues every so often it tends to be like as a girl I think it comes as something part and parcel of growing up but um especially but she's she's good yeah she's really good at the moment well that's really good to hear so so let's let's talk a little bit about that situation not so much about what was going on but 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 you said something that really resonated with me then which was the idea that you know, you were a teacher and so you had an idea of, of how schools handle it. And, you know, we've had, we will speak to other people who are, who are teachers and, and still sort of know. So from a teaching perspective, what, you know, do you see it quickly? How does it work from that point of view? And then we'll talk about it from your it's rental It's quite point tricky from a teaching perspective because... I since becoming a parent I've really I've changed my teaching habits a lot even though I'm not fully in the classroom anymore my approach professionally is very different since having children I think to begin with as a teacher there's kind of if you see severe bullying and it's quite physical and it's there and it's glaring you in the face it's very easy to be to address that and to um put things in place and there's processes because it's obvious and in the yeah more obvious yeah and I think um sometimes that the bullying that is more maybe I I call it low level bullying which I find awful because no bullying should be low level but it's kind of that little bip in day by day which some children will kind of go on and on and it's very like under the radar it's quite Mm. difficult to see it can be a part of maybe is that bullying is it teasing is it banter banter as such and sometimes you do the whole oh just ignore them go and play somewhere else because Um, because i'm sure that there's many a time that that probably would work like I mean it might be an isolated instance I mean I know you know I've been in a room where there's been six children and I I can't keep an eye on six children do you know what I mean it's hard for me to know if if a fight starts or an argument starts or someone starts crying and say someone was mean it's it's actually even for a few kids it's hard to know really you know were they both to blame how did this start is it is it so so I can't even imagine in a class with with you know maybe you know 15 20 30 students mm-hmm. how difficult that must be to to spot it and who do you believe you don't want to and i think something that i thought was i wouldn't want to label a child as a bully as such 
where, you know, to be quick off the mark and be like a child's like, oh, they're saying this and saying that. You don't want to be like, oh, well, they're bullying. Because that's quite, I see that's quite a strong label. It's quite strong. But at the same time, if it's affecting that child and it is constant and consistent, that can be quite damaging for the child that's receiving that as well. Mm. So definitely. Well, it must be so difficult though, just to say, because on that one, because like as well, you know, imagine there's a kid there that, you know, someone accuses of something that you don't like, you know, we have it in law enforcement and insecurity as well. You know, there'd be someone who you go, well, you know, I would, it doesn't take much for me to believe that that's a bad person, right? Because I already don't like you or you've got history or whatever. And and you've got to try and be more impartial than that in that position, haven't you? So I can imagine yeah. how difficult that yeah. would be. Um, it's quite hard. And I think something I teach Molly a lot about these days as well is that you won't be friends with everybody. You can't, you can, it's, it's really difficult, isn't it? You want them all when, as a teacher, you're like, oh, just be friends, be friends. But you're not going to like everybody in life, but you've also got to learn that that you're not going to get on with everybody, but you need to be civil still, still be kind. But you see, I, th- I, th- I think social media is, is a fault for this because I think, you know, certainly, certainly teenagers and even younger children now, they see you know, popular people, celebrities have like thousands of followers. And the assumption is, is that all those followers like you. But as you know, as a friend of mine said to me, I I got someone said something nasty about me online. And and they said, but Jenny, there's people who hate Dolly Parton. Who is, who is, let's face it, is like just, she's just a singer who tries to do charity work. It's not remotely (laughs) controversial. And there's people who just hate her. So like, what you like? You know, yeah, so I think that's very, and I think it's difficult. I think it's very good advice to give children, to give anyone, is to say, look, you just, you cannot expect everyone to like you all the time. I think you just, but it is a human thing to to not want to be disliked, I suppose. Um, So as a teacher, you know, what, what kind of processes and things did you did you know about that would have kicked in from a teaching point of view? Say if you saw it and said, right, there's definitely bullying going on. I'm interested to know. Where does that go? And then we'll talk to you about you coming at it from a different Yeah, so I think, first of all, if it's like that bullying where it is, you know, you can glaringly obviously see it. Conversations need to be had with both children. Mm. Um, I'm always quite conscious to hear both sides because sometimes you may think that one person is more dominant, one child more dominant than the other, but sometimes it's not always the case either. Sometimes it can be matched to both. Um, so it's definitely worth having those conversations just to make sure you have the full story and the full picture. Um, and then just talking to the parents and, and that in itself can be tricky because parents want to protect their little ones. So if you're approaching a parent and you're saying that their child has been unkind, you know, that's not always well received because they don't want to either believe it or they want to protect their child. Or sometimes it's always like, oh, well, they did such and such first and it can be quite tricky um but yeah it's just really clear and good communication and good communication in school and I think that when I've had bullying in my classroom we've done a lot of as well sessions which involve the whole class so it's not targeting individuals as such but educating the class all Mm. together Mm. about issues that maybe you didn't realize because that's another thing since I've had Molly and the children you know you just sometimes they are growing up you think oh my child is really really kind and my child's lovely but sometimes they say things and do things and they don't always realize the impact it has because it may not be a type of bullying that they are aware of so you know we get everyone knows that hitting somebody else is bad but sometimes maybe saying something what they've said they've not realized the impact that maybe has had on somebody and Mm. it's about educating them that everybody is different and they will take views differently and interpret things differently maybe to what you do yeah so yeah it's 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 a really tricky because I think every case is quite individual as well so when it came so this interests me now because I know that I am so for example I I, I give a lot of training right so I have done in my life done a lot of training courses I've been a corporate trainer for sort of higher level people skills which makes me an absolutely awful person to have in the classroom 
because I try really, really hard not to be the trainer or not to be, but yeah. I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who's very outgoing. I'm used to being the centre of attention. In that situation, I'm normally at the front is what I'm saying by that, used to being the centre of attention. So it's very difficult for me to sit back sometimes and go, okay, because you, that's just what it's like. So I'd imagine that if you were a teacher and there was a, a mum who was a teacher, you would be conscious of that and be thinking, okay, I've got to, I've got to be in the yeah. parent role now. So tell me a little bit about what, what happened when you saw it from the from the other side of the of the fence, as it were, from the parent rather from than the, the parent. Side. Like, oh, it's so tricky. It's really hard because I think when I hear it, I have to take it and then I have to step back. Because my instinct as a parent instantly wants to protect Molly and be like, what's going to happen? What are you going to do? And be quite emotional about it. And then my teacher head says, okay, there are processes. They're all children involved as well. I don't believe that one child, you know, the children need to be educated. Sometimes that, you know, you don't know what background that child has come from, what they see, you know, what's made them make those choices. So as the professional in me, I take a step back. So I think it's all about having that space and having that thinking time to kind of calm down, chat to Molly, chat to school staff, and then kind of process it from there. But it is really tough because as soon as you hear anything, you know, as soon as Molly tells me someone's upset her, you instantly want to be protective mum mode and be like, oh my goodness. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not sure. You see, that's the thing. It's like, I'm not sure I'd have your, well, I know I didn't have your patience in a similar situation. <laughs> um, and tend to get very old school about it, which of course is exactly not the mature grown up thing to do. Although I, what I, what I've heard and, and you know, what, I, what I've heard from friends with kids as well is that, you know, there's, there's, it's not adequate sometimes the way schools address it because I think they try and be very diplomatic certainly first of course they do that's what you'd advise is sort of like to go in but when it doesn't work and it carries on so when you talk to the children all of the children and you talk to the bystanders and you talk to the class and we talk about emotions and we talk about words hurting as much as hands and all this um kind you know what was it kind hands kind Kind words all this and then it goes on and you're faced with you know I'll say it, you're not saying it, but you know, your face is on and you just think you are just horrible. This isn't working. It's that keeping that patience and maturity. I, I could imagine. Yeah, it, it really is. And as a teacher as well, it's not nice having those conversations with parents. You know, nobody wants to go and tell somebody else that their child is being cruel to another child and making another child upset to the point where it is, you know, it is mm. bullying. And like, and sometimes those things, like you said, those things that we do, those processes don't always work. That child can be persistent and continue that. And I think as a professional, you've got more understanding of the background of the child. But even then, sometimes that child's come from a lovely, lovely home, you know, and it's just, it's like, where have they got this, this, you know, behavior from that they're going to persist with, even though you've put things in place. And it is really, really tricky. It's such a sensitive subject as well. And it's really hard because I think as a teacher before, I would try and distance the children. So, right, okay, that's happening. They're not taking on board any of these messages we're giving them and this education we're giving them. So you have to protect the person who is being bullied. So, right, let's put some distance between them. But that ultimately is not really solving the problem at all. Because that child could just transfer it, the child. You don't know why they're bullying people or what's triggering it. And like you said before, with the technology now... Mm. that can continue at home a lot easier than leaving school before and you didn't have phones and social media you know you're quite conscious I think like I taught younger ones so we didn't have you know they don't tend to have the mobiles and the things like that but for an older child that bullying can so easily be continued yeah. once school has finished, whereas it never used to be like that, did it? Just be go, you'd go home. No, at least like you can finish it. Though. I mean, I remember once I had to, not, not bullying, but I had an argument with my friend, my best friend, when I was younger, and we had this huge argument, and I'd written a letter saying how terrible she was. And I remember my mum saying, as soon as you write that down, she said, you can shout and scream and everything at each other, and that's just temper and emotion that'll go. She said, but when you write something down, people read it over and over again. And now, yeah. with so 
social media people write it down it's there it's a t- we call it in in, yeah. in cyber we would say it's a digital tattoo once it's written yeah. it's written people can screenshot it and goodness exactly. it. so how you know so so what advice so we you came through molly came through it mm-hmm. what advice advice would you give in terms of pulling people through through that you know how did you get to is it is it that communication all the time i suppose defi- creating a communication safe is definitely key yeah. i've had a lot of parents who it's tricky because parents because when molly moved to her new school she obviously moved when she was in year two so with molly's class i'm not so in with the parent loop and i find that really tricky Mm. and it felt like sometimes there was gossiping going on behind whereas i say if you've got an issue i would much prefer you to come to me so i try and keep communication open with parents quite a lot because i think if there is any issue it's it would be nicer if as adults we could go to each other rather than not, you know, having to gossip to other people about things. But um, yeah, we try and teach Molly a lot about confidence as well. And I don't know, I wouldn't say it's more like standing up for herself, but having the confidence within her because she's had a lot of uh, that low level type consistent picky bullying. Um, And sometimes that's, like I said, that sometimes is never going to go away. As sad as that is to say, it's not going to go away. And she, I feel like we need to build her confidence to be able to be like, okay, you can say that, but that's not true. And to kind of differentiate, it's a really tricky one because it shouldn't happen. And it's because you're asking like, a lot of, you're asking a lot of somebody. Yeah. It's asking a lot of an adult. When I think of all the adults I know that are bullied online or, or you know, people pick on them in life and in you know bullies out also addresses um the workplace as well you know it's to say to an adult you know you've got to have confidence in yourself that this doesn't matter that's easily said it's not as easily done is it but that's what you're working on with Harley yeah so that's what we're working on we we have a lot of talk so I say to her like if you've got an issue I'd rather you talk it out and we can talk it out together or with your teacher or with someone from bullies out I think it's about her having that space where she can feel confident enough to tell us whether mm. it's really high level bullying, low level bullying, but when, if it's bothering her, it needs to be voiced. And then if it's not, the other person isn't edu- you know, it's, if it's not going away and it is consistent, yes, professionals, uh, maybe the parent needs to know, but sometimes, like I said, that just doesn't work. So we try and create safe spaces at home where she can discuss that and then we can help build her confidence and give her ways to kind of, it's horrible because in some ways we're saying ignore it, which shouldn't happen. She shouldn't have to ignore it, but what else are you to do? Uh, Well, I think, you know, sometimes it's a short term strategy, you know, you've got to have a medium and long term strategy as well, which you do, but like it's a short term strategy, you know, communicating frequently about mm. what what's good what's bad what's what what's even yeah. slightly true because i think that's the thing I, I think a lot of the time bullying creeps up on, on people it, it starts off where it's like it's one comment it's not so bad and then maybe another one you think well is that is that like what what does that mean and then before you know yeah. you kind of think well hang on this is a pattern but be, but you can be yeah. in that pattern and we're asking little children sometimes to recognize that they're in a pattern and, and, and I mean you don't recognize who you're in it do you sometimes you don't know and and like you said it can go on for a long time as well because I don't know sometimes you just think oh actually this has been a long time we've had enough now we've had enough of trying to build confidence and talking about it at home and hiding it but then you know school are doing their best you think if I've spoken to that parent if they're quite open then that's a good thing but sometimes parents aren't as open with each other you know they Mm. like I said they want to protect their child and they I I don't think any parent wants to believe that their child could hurt somebody else whether it be with words or physically so it can be quite I it's difficult because I can understand that if somebody if a parent if I was told that Molly was being unkind that would hurt me and I would be a bit like oh my goodness she she couldn't possibly do that Mm. so it's it must be you know not it's hard, isn't it? Because obviously the person who's being bullied should not, is the victim in such. But then if a child is bullying, you know, how do you, how do you deal with that? 
Mm. as a parent knowing that your child is the one that's hurting someone else because ultimately when they're in school you've got no control over them either you know that's down to the school staff they're looking after that child as well aren't they they are and so you know for all of this for the advice uh, on how to deal with all of this and for lots of free resources as well as workshops uh advisors mentors and a million other things we do direct you to go to uh, bulliesout.com you are the experts in all of this and we'll give you guidance if as a parent and just like Jen's saying and as I know I would I, perhaps I wouldn't go down what would be the most effective and diplomatic route I certainly wouldn't necessarily be as diplomatic as it sounds like you've been and the thing is that sounds like oh that sounds great it's a great answer but that might just make it worse as well so we do direct you to Bullies Out to website um, and you can become a member of Bullies Out for just £5 a year and that will get you access to lots of resources constant communication that'll help you if you're in this situation if you're observing this situation if you're perhaps a teacher who's looking to get you know who's, who's involved in this in some way and looking to bring some resolution to everyone involved in these situations which we know are very common let's talk a little bit now jen because molly's doing very well now in fact exceptionally yeah. so yeah going to palaces and things so let's tell I me about, about that program and, and what, what, so, what I'm talking yeah about. so molly's um she's oh she's done wonderful she did so much during lockdown lockdown really helped bullies out really helped her during lockdown actually it was a really great focus for her mm -hmm. um and a way of keeping connected and um especially with her mental health and other things so yeah then they put her forward for the diana award so she won uh she, well, she, it wasn't a win it was a receive so she received the diana award which was wonderful for her work during lockdown and her work with bullies out and promoting bullies out throughout so she's an ambassador year. and she promotes bullies out and she raises money i think i saw it did I'm yeah trying to remember didn't she raise some money i'm trying to think she did so we were supposed to walk pen a van That's and it. we were raising some money for that and then pen a van didn't happen because of lockdown and she was gutted and this is a child who doesn't really like to walk to school most days so i was shocked she, that she was yeah. uh, gutted that we couldn't walk pen a van so we decided she decided right well we could, we have to stay local so she said well why don't we just walk the same distance but in our area because she felt like people had donated money and even though it was postponed not cancelled she was like well they've donated that's bad so we had to walk in our local area the same distance as pen of um we did that twice i think actually <laughs> i remember then, seeing her now and yeah. you, know, you said oh bless her and then we and then we finally got to do pen of then and then she she just left like little notes for people so she made like little postcards for our neighbors saying keep smiling be happy we've got quite um elderly neighbors as well on our street so she'd check in on them um, and then just working on Bullies Out do um, like different badges so you can work towards different badges and awards. So she worked on her kindness. She did her digital one, which is where she she wrote a poem from all the ambassadors to, to the NHS, thanking them for their service and their hard work. Oh, sweet. Um, That's so and sweet. then it was it was really good. It was shared on on um wales online so everybody Aww. got to see it it was lovely it's really nice seeing some of the comments that people left for her and that and she's quite she's quite like oh i don't know what all the fuss is about but, but um, you should save them jen you should save them for and when she has a day that's bad she can yeah. look at them you know i even say that to to adults and to people i mentor just just for work and say you know there's days when we all feel terrible so take cut and paste those nice comments yeah. for a time when you just need to feel like someone appreciates you oh yeah. and so and little sister rosie she's four is she she is. She's four, so she's now joined mini ambassadors. How could she be mini when Ruth <laughs> Molly <laughs> is like a mini, and Ruth is <laughs> even minier? I know. Well, when um when Molly would have her ambassador training she used to go to cardiff but then when lockdown came we have it over zoom now so she, rosie was always around she was like oh i want to get in a, on a piece oh. of that action and um so yeah so they started the mini ambassadors program so now she does that and it's really really good and i think getting them while they're younger and having that education behind them is brilliant like this time when they had their mini ambassador program they had a handprint and they had to write five kind words and color it all pretty so it was a lovely activity but it taught her so much and i mm. think if we can catch them when they're little and they can carry on promoting that 
as they grow up it's such a lovely thing to be able to do and she loves it she really does because she's like her big sister now so (laughs) well that's just lovely and how practical and you know surely that you know that that'll help with with uh, with molly's self-esteem as well to know that she's won the well not won she's received recognition for all that hard work she sounds like the most amazing little girl and you're an amazing mum it has been delightful to speak to you jen i and i'm sure you know any questions thoughts or comments you can send them through to bulliesout.com via the website they are really happy to answer questions and to help you if you're in this situation you can reach out across social media they're on facebook instagram twitter uh, and all the rest so um Jen, I know I can hear you are a busy lady and you've got to go and attend to uh, yeah, the puppy is going mad and puppies and everything else so I'm going to let you go but it's been an absolute delight to speak to you and thank, thank you so much for being part That's of the show no problem. thank you very Take much care. Lovely speaking to you. Take care. bye bye bye